Monica grew up without parental love and affection. Her mother died early when she was six years old and Monica hardly remembered her. Only her smile, her soft linen hair, and the smell of her perfume remained in her memories. As an adult, Monica tried to find a similar scent, but she failed. Her father raised the girl in strictness and she did not understand why. But one day, her grandmother accidentally told her the secret. She said that Monica's mother was from a troubled family and she had died of an overdose. So her father, fearing that his daughter would repeat her mother's fate, restricted his daughter in everything except her studies. He strictly controlled her, and many simple pleasures available to other children were under absolute prohibition. Almost all Monica's childhood was saturated with punishments. Her father often put her in the corner for any fault, whether it was a bee or five minutes late home. But apart from punishments, her father also made occasional encouragements. Monica loved Snickers, but her father considered these chocolate bars bad for her teeth, so he bought them for her only twice a year, once for her birthday and once for New Year's, and sometimes, very rarely, for special achievements in her studies. Under such conditions, Monica had only one possibility for survival. She had to learn how to lie, and the clever girl has mastered this skill to perfection. For example, she used to watch TV at her friend's house while she assured her father that she was taking extra classes in math. At the same time, she was solving examples in her notebook while she was watching TV, otherwise she could not get away without punishment. With the money she was given for school lunches, she often bought herself makeup and fancy hairpins and hid them where she knew her father would never look, in a bag of sanitary pads. At school, Monica usually took off her long, shapeless skirt under which she had a short denim skirt sewn by herself and quietly walked around in it during classes without fear of being punished. Eventually, by the end of school, Monica had become a true master of pretense and deception, and that's why she decided to become an actress. She told her father that she would enroll in the law school, but in fact she entered a theater class. She began her studies, but she could deceive her father only three months. One day, he called the dean's office and found out that his daughter did not study there at all. A terrible scandal broke out. The father swung at his daughter in a rage, but put his hand down in powerlessness. And Monica quietly said that if he touched her, even a finger, she would report him to the police. After that, the girl quickly gathered her few belongings and left home. For three weeks, Monica wandered from one acquaintance to another, and then her grandmother called her and offered to rent her a room. Her grandmother was a good woman and often defended her granddaughter in front of her son, but he had never listened to her. And no matter how her grandmother tried to explain to Monica the reasons for her father's behavior, she could not understand why he had decided that she would follow in her mother's footsteps and why he thought he had the right to punish her for any little thing. After starting to live separately, Monica finally breathed freely. She was ashamed to continue taking money from her grandmother, so she found a part-time job. Her boyfriend helped her out. His mother was the head of a modeling agency, and he asked her to hire Monica. Monica was a very beautiful girl, and soon she began modeling for lingerie catalogs and ads for kitchen appliances. The girl was always afraid that her father would see her in some lingerie catalog, and then she would be in trouble. But strangely enough, he saw a picture of his daughter in a catalog of household products, where she was wearing a short apron and showing a grater. And that was enough. That was the last time Monica saw her father alive. He stopped her near the class, made a row in front of everybody, took her by the hand, and dragged her into the car. Luckily, Monica's classmates ran up and quickly beat the girl back. You're not my daughter anymore, the father shouted at Monica and drove away. After that, they never saw each other again. But Monica was not really upset about this because she had not felt much love for her father before, too. Especially since she had a fascinating life ahead of her. Parties, festivals, first roles, success, love, broken heart and love again. All this swirled to Monica like a bright vortex. 
To avoid meeting her father, she did not even go to the funeral of her grandmother, the only family member who was always kind to her. Monica came only the next day. She brought a huge bouquet of white roses to the grave and wept bitterly. But life went on and Monica's career rapidly evolved. She became a good actress and was married twice. She had no children because Monica was literally afraid she could not be a good mother and would be like her father. By the way, she also hated the very chocolate bars she had loved so much in her childhood. When her neighbor told her that her father had died, Monica felt nothing but disappointment because she had to attend the funeral. She didn't want to go back to the father's apartment, but finally she decided to go in and look for some old pictures of her mother before selling the apartment. In the 15 years she hadn't been there, almost nothing had changed. Monica walked cautiously into her father's room as if he were about to return, just as she had done as a child. There she found an old shoebox, and when she opened it, she felt her heart squeeze painfully. On top, she found 30 Snickers bars, one for every New Year's Eve and birthday for the last 15 years. Under the candy bars were a bunch of newspaper clippings with articles about Monica. She sat on the floor looking through the clippings of all the important events in her life recently, and she was shocked that her father had collected and stored them all. When she reached the bottom of the box, Monica saw a picture of a young, smiling woman and a half-empty bottle of perfume. Monica inhaled the dear and familiar to tears scent and suddenly noticed that the lid of the bottle had been erased as if it had been opened and closed many times. It seemed strange to her because there were still many perfumes in the bottle and suddenly Monica imagined her father opening the bottle and inhaling the fragrance that his beloved wife had once smelled. Tears ran down her cheeks. She had never understood her father, and now she probably would never understand. Monica took one of the chocolate bars, and taking a bite, felt the unforgettable taste of chocolate and nuts, but this time it was not sweet, but salty from her tears.